Hello booktube. Today I want to talk to you about some of the books I've been reading for Nonfiction November. Of the books I have on my docket, um, basically two of them closely match um, the prompts that Olive of a Book Olive um, came up with for this year's Nonfiction November prompts. Uh, I chose uh, Shoals and Peanuts, a biography by David Mike Michaelis uh, for design because obviously uh, Shoals was a cartoonist and cartooning does involve some design. And The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers by Maxwell King as a representative of voice. Um, the other ones I will uh, do separate videos on. So first, let's talk about shells. Um, on the whole, I really like this book. It's very, I mean, obviously it's exhaustive. There's um, a lot of information. Um, and I... On the whole, I really like the book um, and his interpretation of some of the strips. Um, Charles M. Scholes is uh, the cartoonist who created Peanuts. Um, so a lot of um, the criticism or scholarship regarding the interpretation of Peanuts does have some biographical or autobiographical sort of bent in here and I think in the other biography of Scholes. The one big problem with this book is one of interpretation. Um, Michaelis ha basically there he has like an interpretive strategy. Um, it's not explicitly a form of psychoanalysis, but it is a kind of a form of psychoanalysis that he tends to interpret Schultz's life in. And in certain areas where you would think the like, psychoanalysis, like your stereotypical uh, points of interest or targets of explication, he kind of hits on it. Um, you can see this in the discussion of Scholz's maternal family, the Halversons. You can see it in his relationship with his mother, with his uh, first wife, um, with women in general. And to a certain extent, it does pathologize him in a way. And what I mean by pathologizing is it makes this him look, I don't know necessarily bad or really like more deeply troubled than he probably was. Um, another part of the book that annoyed me and I'll also annoyed me about The Good Neighbor is the disappearing kids. Um, Scholz's children are very rarely mentioned. Um, I mean, there'll be like, uh, he'll talk, there'll be some issue with uh, Meredith or maybe one of the others um, might pop up here and there of doing something or other but it's like yeah for where have they been it kind of was like and it sort of was like so if the kids aren't 
as mentioned or as present, what else isn't being mentioned or what else is being left out. So anyway, but on the whole, it was a really good book. Um, despite, I think, the interpretive issues and maybe raising questions of are things being left out. Again, probably a new, another biography. Probably that kind of gives more information or a counter point to it. So, moving on to The Good Neighbor with Fred Rogers. This is more of a hagiography. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Fred Rogers was like an amazing human being. He appeared to be an amazing human being, and he was an amazing human being. <laughs> um, he just, it, yeah, I mean, and I think Maxwell King really captures the character of Fred Rogers magnificently. But again, there is the disappearing children. Um, particular, and in this case, it's particularly pertinent because Fred Rogers did have some child, some problems with his sons as they were became teenagers, and that kind of raises two questions: Why is these issues only being raised in this one? tiny part of the narrative and two that raises a very interesting question of for somebody who could connect so well with um, preschoolers with young children why did he have such difficulty connecting with his own sons when they were teenagers or did he have problems connecting with teenagers in general or just one of those things where like family complicates matters? Um, that was interesting. Another thing that I really found annoying is once the books, once Mr. Rogers started his show, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, he, it, Basically, this becomes a history of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and less a biography of Fred Rogers. And while it does sort of, I think, beggar the question, and I would love to see uh, if, why, if this should not have been a history of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood with just a little bit of biographical information as needed for Fred Rogers, but I would love to see, after reading this, a history of public broadcasting in America. I seriously would love to see a history of broadcasting and public broadcasting in America, and even television, because there are parts of in here when like, Fred Rogers was present at the beginning of television, his um, father was an early shareholder of the original uh, corporate overlord to NBC. And that connection got Fred Rogers uh, what was called an apprenticeship, which we would probably now call an internship there. And he basically performed spectacularly, went on to uh, WK, QED in Pittsburgh, again, at when that station was first starting up. And it's just really interesting look at um, early television. You know, anyway, but, so yeah, I'm, I enjoyed it. I kind of, I mean, started getting a bit disappointed as the focus shifted more toward to a history of the neighborhood and the structure broke in such a way as to sort of look more like an 
more of like a history than a biography. So anyway. So those were the first two books I read in nonfiction November. I'll probably film a discussion of um, Soldier, Priest, and God, the biography of Alexander the Great. I basically consumed in two days and if uh, probably later today or tomorrow and that's and then I'll try to do a writing uh, NaNoWriMo update in probably Friday so anyway that's it all I got today or right now anyway sorry I'm a little scattershot today sorry about that anyway, thank you booktube